first would be to use good instructional design, and I think that goes for any class, whether it's face-to-face, -face, online, or blended. So thinking about what are the objectives of the course, and then working backwards. How um, will your assessments measure whether or not the students have met the objectives? And then how are you going to have the students engaged? So that would be the very first thing. And then after you have that laid out, then start thinking about, well, what are some of the ways that students can connect with each other? How will these assignments look in a blended environment? Um, be creative because, you know, maybe you're teaching a methods course and you need to observe students in an environment um, working with kids. Well, that looks very different when you're teaching in a blended course versus a face-to-face -face course, but it can be done. You just have to be creative and it's not going to look the same and it shouldn't look the same as in a face-to-face -face class. Take risks and don't be afraid of failure because inevitably the technology is going to fail at some point on someone's end. So whether it's you're hosting a web conference and all of a sudden you can't share your screen, um, that's going to happen. So just be flexible and look at those failures as an opportunity to problem solve and, and model that problem, problem solving for students. Have fun and be creative. I think you can do a lot of things in a blended environment that perhaps you couldn't do in a traditional classroom. So thinking about how can students use um, different technology tools to represent their knowledge and how that might give an advantage to students who have traditionally struggled with uh, our traditional assessments of writing and speaking in public. Think about how you can build community. It's really easy for students in a blended class to be isolated on the weeks that you're not meeting a face-to-face. Uh, also know that some students may not like the maybe that's their first time they're in a blended class and they may not like it so you might be dealing with that frustration and it might not necessarily be your teaching but them getting used to a different format. And then thinking about assessment practices so uh, well, sometimes we forget to consider how much time assessment will take. We think, oh, wow, this is going to be a great way to measure learning outcomes. And then we realize that it was a terrible idea because we're checking the discussion board every waking minute of our life. And so I would just say be conscious of the assessment practices that you use. How much time is it taking from the instructor? How much time is it taking of the students? Because, again, in a large class, the worst thing that can happen in a discussion to me is that I'm working all week, I don't have time to get to the discussion board, so I post at the last minute, but I have nothing else to say because already 100 posts have happened. And so not only do I have to read those 100 posts and think about them, but try to find something unique to say. So thinking, really thinking through the assessment is critical. And um, Again, the time for the instructors, the time for students, as well as what the assessment will look like. I also think that you have to be exceptionally organized. So uh, in a face-to-face -face classroom, sometimes you can come in, you're not quite as prepared, and you can pull it off and sort of elaborate as you go and be more precise during the class. But in an online and blended environment, you really have to be organized and clear in your communication. Know that it's going to take a lot of time to develop. So you may not have the perfect class the first year. Uh, you may not have the perfect class the second year. You're always going to be tweaking it, and the technology is going to always change. So you might be redoing a couple things, but it just takes a lot of time, but it's worth it. <laughs>